Good morning. It's January the 3rd, the year 2021. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Have you thought about that we're one year closer to the rapture? And I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm not some nut that's going to tell you that it's going to be next week or next month. Uh, we've talked about that before. What I want to deal with this morning is uh, what, we, what should we be doing while we're right waiting on the rapture? There are specific instructions throughout the Bible that gives us some clue as to what we should be doing. Maybe some of you remember this was on a handout on a bookmark. Uh, I don't know exactly when. It's been a while. So I did not know if you still had it, if you ever got it, if you read it. Uh, But it's something that's worth going back over. Uh, It'll be a relatively short lesson, but it's an important one. I advise you to get a pencil or a pen. There's quite a bit of reference to Bible verses. And uh, I want to back up each item with a Bible verse so you can jot down where it is and go back and refer to it later. The first thing is, do not neglect the church. And that is found in Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25. And it reads like this. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is a matter of some, but we are exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. When the pandemic hit, and after a time the church reopened with some very workable social distancing, temperature taken at the door, Uh, You've got plenty of room. There's no one really close to you. But everybody had a decision to make based on their own personal circumstances. Personally, my wife and I decided that if we went to the grocery store, which we did, if we went to a restaurant occasionally, which we did, if we went to other places, which we did, then we had no real reason to not go to church, to not go to the church building on Sunday morning. And like I say, that's a personal decision that each person has to make. And maybe there are valid reasons. But if you don't have valid reasons, what I'm saying and what these verses are saying is you need to be attending church services at the church. 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, uh, you will be amazed at how they got this thing set up. I've never had a moment in church that I felt uneasy about my health. Number two, learn to respond to life spiritually. And that reference is found in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Number three, you must relate to one another in love. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. 
so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Do you see how many of these verses given instruction are mentioning the return of the Lord at the time of the rapture? Number four. Be not guilty of judging others. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. At that time in history, none of us are going to be able to hide anything. Jesus is going to see everything we've ever thought and everything that we've ever done. So we should not be guilty of judging others because we're all sinners. Number five, be diligent in your ministry. Second Timothy 4, 1 and 2. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Listen to this, how strong this declaration is. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. You don't have to be a preacher to preach the word. Every church member should be a preacher in one, in one form or another. We all should be witnesses. And I think that's primarily what a preacher is. He's a witness of the word. Number six, try to reach the lost. This is written by Jesus' half-brother by the name of Jude. Jude 1, 21 through 23. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. Again, strong wording but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even this garment defiled by flesh. There's at least a couple of verses there that we've read that say, really, do what you have to do in order to lead someone to salvation. Convince, ignore, and exhort, uh, put the fear of God in them, whatever. Number seven, another half brother of Jesus named James is a scripture. Remain steadfast and patient. My wife will tell you that I am not the most patient person alive on this earth. I am probably the least patient person. We used, she used to say you, 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 you want what you want when you want it, you know? It, 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 James 5, 7 through 8 reads, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. 
See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Number eight. If you have sin in your life that you have not asked forgiveness for, renounce that sin. 1 John chapter 2, 28, 29. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. I've often hoped that I would not be ashamed when I face Jesus Christ. And I may be. But if the Bible is true that he forgives us of our sins and we're saved by his blood, I don't see how I could be ashamed. Number nine, restore the bereaved. And this is dealing with people who have lost loved ones to death. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 and 18, and all of you know this scripture. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And it's talking there about the dead the dead in Christ, we shall be caught up together with those people in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. If you've had someone that's passed away and that you know was saved, then you don't have to worry about them. In fact, the dead are going to raise, be raised first. And as they are said, then we will join them in the air, those of us that are still living. The last one is number 10. Remember the Lord's table, which is the Lord's supper. There again, you know this scripture. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And make mention of the fact that our church has continued to serve the Lord's Supper with regularity, utilizing safe and secure methods to do so in regards to the pandemic that we face. I think it's complimentary to our staff that they have searched for these things that are safe and that we as a church continue and we've also invited people that look online or watching programs online on Sunday that they participate using uh, stuff that they have in their house as participation. If you are not attending church and you're searching for a good church home, 
Let me this morning invite you to attend Hickson First Baptist Church on Grub Road. It's right off of uh, Highway 153. If you're traveling north, it's to the right on Grub Road. There are some active Sunday school classes meeting, not many, but a few, if you prefer to join an active class. There is also uh, the online Sunday school lesson of which we're participating this morning for January the 3rd. And it's online at nine o'clock. The church service, which is also online, is at 10 o'clock, live and online at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. You will be a welcome guest. You will be greeted cordially. You will be met by several people uh, and welcome. You will hear a sermon preached uh, straight out of God's word. Uh, I have not heard Stephen Granger preach a sermon yet that did not have particular verses of the scripture as a background. Never. Never some wild ghost chase. Always Bible centered. And I don't know about you, but that's important to me that it's what I come to church to hear. I don't want to hear some individual's determination, but I want him to read it to me out of the Bible and let me read it, and then I listen to him explain it. And that's all I ask for. But you're welcome in our church. We invite you to come. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, please, please, give some attention to it. Uh, as I've said before, and I've taught lessons before on the subject, I think the time is narrowing. When? I don't know. But I think we're a whole lot closer than we were last year, and we're a whole lot closer than the year before. So if you're not a born-again believer, and you're not going to participate in the rapture, you need to take care of business. And you need to do it soon. Happy New Year to you. I absolutely hope and pray that 2021 is better than 2020 was. Good morning and have a great day.